All right, here we are. It is another episode of Let to Be Talked. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we're going to be sitting down today talking about all kinds of stuff that has been going on in this last week. Sometimes you just cannot believe the amount of uh, music and film and comedy news that just hits in just a few days. It's like, wow. Anyway, welcome aboard. It is September 11th, and uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, coming out to my shows in uh, La Jolla, California. Over the weekend, I did five headlining shows, and the audiences were just incredible. And man, it is a, it is a workout to do five one-hour shows in a weekend. It is uh, to stay focused. And to be engaged with the audience and remember the uh, new material, some of the old, just mixing it all up and having a great time. It was it was awesome. And thank you, La Jolla Comedy Store, Mike, Van, and Ryan for having me out there. And uh, I did the, po the podcast out there, Mike Van's uh, La Jolla Comedy Store podcast. And that'll be coming out pretty soon. Anyway, um, also... Uh, no matter what year it is or how long it's been, I constantly um, want to send love to everybody that lost somebody on September 11th. And uh, I, I never take that lightly. I'll never forget it. And I just want to uh, say that real quick. Doesn't matter how many years pass. It is uh, definitely a deep, deep wound in America and uh, a dark, dark time. And, a, and a, a massive, brutal uh, wound to New York City. So I want to get that out there just to uh, just to get that straight, people. We got to send our love. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about today. Yes, we do. And uh, we can start that right off with what seemed to be a massive massive uh, uh, just boom across the internet with ACDC dropping a little nugget over the weekend. Whenever ACDC drops something, of course, it's going to immediately grab my attention. A long, lifetime-loving uh, ACDC freak that I am. Most of you know that I love ACDC. I have Bon Scott tattooed on my damn body. A man. I have a man tattooed on my body and uh, doing a tribute to Bond for uh, a long, long time and just madly in love with the band. That's pretty much it. And uh, and I, I like to say that I am, of course, I totally love the band, but there are those people out there who are uh, whatever the band they love. And we're going to talk about a few of them this uh, on this episode, one being ACDC, the other being the Rolling Stones. There are the fans, then there are the crazies, you know, no matter what the band does, uh, they don't give a fuck. This is this is it. I, and if you say anything like, eh, I don't really like that song, you're like, you fucking, bah, you know. Metallica has that also. And, uh, you know, I think that's a good thing when you have a band and uh, you have super fans. You know, I mean, it's it's so hard to keep people interested in something, especially, uh, you know, five years, 10 years, but, you know, 40, 50 years, people are still into something. That is very, very rare these days. So, my point is, uh, I'm going to be talking about some stuff with ACDC, and some, I'm sure people are going to be like, what? Oh, fuck you, or whatever. But, you know, um, I, I've said it many times, I, I I love this band, I love Metallica, I love the Stones, but there's bands that I just absolutely love, and there's parts of it that I don't love, and I'll and I'll be honest about it. But I still love the band, you know, ACDC. I don't like the fly on the wall record. 
And that's just uh, the honest truth. Metallica, I don't, I don't like the load and reload records, but uh, I love saying anger. And uh, people hate saying anger. And I love saying I love saying anger. And uh, on this uh, week of the 20th anniversary of it. And anytime I can, I love to just fucking pop in and go, saying saying anger is great on their uh, their Instagram or their Twitter. And just watch the dummies. Oh, fuck you. That fucking record sucks. <laughs> anyway, so unless you were sleeping under a rock, there's no way that you did not hear this little snippet of ACDC. And uh, they drop a, I don't know, maybe it was a 35 second, 40 second recording of them rehearsing if you want blood, you got it. And then immediately on the bottom of it, it said the boys have been rehearsing, getting ready for power trip. And uh, Cliff Williams has come out of retirement and uh, drummer Matt Luge will be on the kit. And look, I've been, uh, I've been in the, uh, around the music biz and I've, uh, course been an acdc fan like i said a zillion years i was like who now i had talked about it last week that there were rumblings that phil was not going to be able to do the show and in classic acdc form they do not tell you anything and uh this is how it's always been with that band and it is why they uh have that giant mystique still and which is really still stuns me that I had him on the podcast for long, long form interviews because uh, it, uh, you know, it doesn't really go down with those guys. It's always like five, 10 minute snippets and it's very locked in. The record was wrote between 90 and 91. We recorded with Mutt Lang or whatever. It's just business. Still to this day, you rarely know anything about Angus. I know personally, uh, not for a fact, but it has to be a fact that he is a billionaire. There's just no way. They've made so much money. You don't hear about that. Uh, rarely do you hear about, you know, he's married, but you don't hear really anything. Uh, doesn't look like he drives. He doesn't have any flashy cars on Instagram. He doesn't uh, show off his multiple houses. I did see a house that he had built a few years ago, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. You could Google that. Anyway, so that's the classic form. You're looking at it and you're going, wait, wait a minute. What are they even talking about? Who's Matt Luge? And then some people were like, Cliff Williams out of retirement. And uh, like people were stunned on that. And yeah, I mean, Cliff retired. He said it right on my podcast that uh, when they put out the last record that, um, you know, he would probably only do maybe four shows. Maybe, he said. It was interesting. He was dead honest. I said, do you see yourself touring with ACDC? Of course, COVID had happened and, and, and all of that. But he just said no. Nope. And I was stunned that it didn't get more press uh, than it did. It got a little bit of press, but um, it was funny that, I mean, right there, he's, you know, Phil, or uh, Cliff is pretty old. Let me, let me look it up real quick here. Uh, I think he is the oldest in the band, uh, Cliff Williams. Let's see here. And, um, and then, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting there going like, well, what happened? He's 73. Okay. So, yeah, he's pretty old. Not Mick Jagger old, of course, you know, and um, not the Stones old, but also the Stones aren't playing at 120 dB full tilt screaming rock. They are a rock band, but they are not... Uh, you know, they don't have background singers. They don't have keyboards. They don't have horns. They are just playing screaming rock. And uh, it is uh, very difficult to play insane 
loud rock as you get older and the endurance and the beating, uh, the beating that it does on your brain. And of course you're hearing, but hopefully you're wearing hearing hair, uh, earplugs and stuff. But, you know, people were like, Cliff Williams retired. What? Yeah, he had retired. I'm sure he, you know, he, I mean, he's been in the band since power age, a zillion years. Angus still has that kind of wiry fire. I'm sure Angus really doesn't have any hobbies other than playing in ACDC is his life. And that is his full on call of duty. So right away, millions and millions of comments. And uh, of course I had um, questions too. And then I remember, uh, this is an interesting call I got about, not a call, it was a text about a month ago. And it was uh, from Brad Wilk, who's a good friend of mine. And I have yet to been able to get him on the phone. And uh, I, I don't know if they made him sign an NDA or what. But I was texting with Brad, said, hey, do you want to get some tacos? And he said, I'll have to get back to you next week. Uh, I'm headed to the UK for an interesting uh, audition. And I was like, with who? And he's like, I can't say. Now, I just fucking forgot about that. But when this announcement happened, I started thinking, wait a minute. That had to be it. I mean, you know, he has not called me and I don't know what happened. But I'm sure he had to sign an NDA. You know, uh, I did when I heard the new record. I told that story a long time ago. I went in, they made me sign these papers if I said anything. And for, you know, over a year, people are like, nope, no ACDC, they're done. There's no record. Blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, fuck, I heard the record right in the office at Sony. This is crazy, you know? Anyway, so then, of course, when they make the announcement, people are like, what? No, Phil Rudd. Now, what we do know is Phil Rudd was able to go to Canada to do the record. Now, I will tell you this right now. Canada is the most strict country to get into on the planet. I'm telling you, man, if you got a DUI and you pull up in your car to get across the border, they, they run your passport and then they go, no, come on in the office. You got to go in there. And then you got to explain what happened. They might let you in if you pay 250 bucks. It's a, it's a brutal process. I remember there was a sound man on a tour I was on. He got arrested for weed years ago. He could never go into Canada. Same with Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz could never go into Canada. If you have any kind of arrest, uh, track record, felony, stuff like that, you can't go in. So, a lot of people are saying it's probably because of his legal problems in the U.S. or sorry, in his uh, New Zealand, you know, that thing with the attempted kidnapping and to hire someone to murder back when he was uh, tweaking. Wild, man, that press hit. And, um, you know, a lot of people think it's from that. Now, I thought about it for a minute and I was like, I don't I don't. I don't know if it's that because you can get into the U.S. pretty easy. I mean, if you talk to any uh, Republicans, they'll say they let anyone in, man. Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> but the honest uh, truth is they do let you in. Uh, it's pretty easy to get into the U.S. So I don't know really if it's the legal stuff, because I'm telling you, like I just said, Canada is insanely hard to get into. Now, ACDC, I said it a little while ago, are definitely billionaires. They can pay anyone to get in. They could just say, who do we talk to? Here's $100,000. Here's some lawyers. Let's get this in here. So I don't know if it's that legal thing. I really, I really uh, am not, I'm not too sure on that. Now, um, who knows? Maybe Phil said, hey, man, I want this amount. And they said, no, I don't know what it is. 
But I do know when they announced ACDC was playing Power Trip, I didn't even know who might be singing. And I said this before, but, you know, Brian had the ear damage, had to leave the band. We know that. Axel filled in, finished the tour, and then they went away for a long time. Then they secretly did a record. Brian was singing. He sounded fucking good. And we're like, oh, okay. Uh, once the COVID stuff maybe is uh, all taken care of, they can go out and tour. Brian is not saying, other than in the studio, in years, live, an ACDC full set, which is usually around two to two and a half hours. He has not done that in a long time. He is saying at the uh, Taylor Hawkins um, you know, memorial, and he sang a couple songs with the band at um the o2 arena i didn't know who the band was but i think they did back in black i watched it yeah they did back in black and they just shook me all night long and uh you know it's got to be a struggle for him at his age now and like i said i do a tribute to bon scott every couple years i'm in excellent shape uh i work out i eat clean and I will tell you this right now, it is fucking hard to sing two and a half hours of ACDC. And if you haven't done it in five, six, seven years, it's going to be even harder. So lots of questions immediately hit the uh, the Internet. Who's Matt Luge? You know, I, 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 I'm assuming that's how you say his name. L-A-U-G. Is that how it is? Let's see. Yeah. L-A-U-G. Who's that? I bet I bet he's never had his name Google so much. You know, it's uh, absolutely crazy how fast his Wikipedia was uh, updated. That was funny, man, because when I looked at it, it was like uh, Matt Luge is an American drummer who has played with many bands such as Alanis Morissette. He played on Jagged Little Pill, and then Taylor Hawkins joined the band. So he was, uh, I guess, kind of a studio guy. Alice Cooper slashes Snake Pit. He's 55, a couple years younger than me, uh, from South Carolina, and uh, moved to L.A., did the Jagged Little Pill record in 95, played in a, a reformed uh, autograph. Remember them? Turn up the radio. Autographed the band that did the uh, Van Halen 1984 tour and said they would get a giant bonus if they could make it through the tour because most bands get booed off. They got lucky. They got a big hit and made it all the way through the tour and got the bonus. He's also a drummer with uh, Mike Campbell's um, Dirty Knobs. I've seen Mike Campbell's Dirty Knobs. I do not remember the drummer. And... Uh, you know, but I can see why, because I go see uh, if I go see Mike Campbell, I'm just looking at the guitars the whole time. Usually like, oh, what guitar is he playing now? You know, anyway, this says on, on September 9th, 2023, ACDC announced they were performing with Matt. Lu is it is it Lug or Laug? I don't know, because I haven't heard his name yet. So it could be Matt Laug. It could be Matt uh, Luge. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not the smartest fucking guy on the planet, especially when it comes to people's names that aren't, uh, you know, Ted Smith. <laughs> so, lots of questions here. My first question is, when they did announce they were playing Power Trip, like I said, they, uh, you know, didn't say who was in the band for a little while. And then I think they might have got a little nudge because, um, you know, maybe... The, the power trip promoters, Golden Voice, were like, well, make, you know, make sure you drop the lineup so we can, um, you know, get the ticket selling. I do think ACDC could just really kind of sell out anything just with the logo. And then people later would uh, question who's in the band. They buy the tickets right away and then they go, wait, who's in the band? You know, and it's weird that we're at that state of ACDC of who would be in the band. Why isn't uh, Phil Rudd doing the gigs? Why isn't Simon Wright back in? A lot of people did some internet, um, you know, sniffing around, saw that 
uh, that uh, uh, Chris Slade had gigs, so he wasn't going to be in. And he, I mean, he'd been drumming on and off with them for years. And a lot of people thought, you know, bring back Simon Wright, you know, from the flick of the switch tour on, he was playing. And there were those names going around. And, uh, you know, I I thought, well, the drummers I thought they could do it were, yeah, uh, Brad Wilk, of course, but uh, Steve Gorman. Steve Gorman plays my Bond Scott tribute. He's the, uh, he does the bulk of the drumming on those. I, I, I have different people play. Of course, Bill Burr has played uh, drums. Uh, he's one of the drummers on the Bond Scott bash. So is Brad Wilk. So is uh, Dave Lombardo. There's a lot of guys that play drums on the Bon Scott bash, but the main drummer is always Steve Gorman. And this guy has got the Phil Rudd feel. Another guy that could do it, I thought, was um, Ronnie Crawford, who was the drummer uh, in the early Bon Scott uh, tribute stuff. And an old drummer in my band who played with, um, fuck, what was her name? I forget her name now. Uh, that girl that had the glasses, little nerdy, ner the nerdy woman that had the big hit. I can't even remember her name. My brain doesn't work anymore, man. Anyway, my point is they didn't really say who was in the band and then they kind of dropped it and it showed Phil, Stevie, Brian, Angus, Cliff. And they're going, wow, okay, cool. This is, this is fucking Man, we get to see Phil Rudd again. This is going to be great. And then um, it didn't happen. So all kinds of internet comments. It just goes to show you, doesn't matter how big of a band you are, how much people love you, you're going to get the fucking wrath. And uh, for that, you can go to uh, the old Twitter now called X, which no one calls it X, and I don't think anybody ever will. It's a lot like a football stadium when they rename it like Candlestick in San Francisco. Everybody just called it the stick forever. No matter how much people fucking paid to get it sponsored, um, they just called it the stick or Candlestick. So they dropped the clip, power up. Listen to rehearsals of the boys powering up with Cliff Williams, who's coming out of retirement for the festival, and Matt Lag Luge Logue on drums. <laughs> and then, uh, so I clicked on it. Of course, I listened to it. And uh, so many fucking, so many, so many people are, they get it so wrong when they think they know shit about music business or bands or everything, they're just so wrong. Then there's other people that, you know, are just, I don't know. So first comment needs more wash on that hi hat too tight and more treble and gain on the main guitar. Well, do you think that, the average ACDC fan, the person who just loves ACDC rock and roll, do you think I'm a fucking crazy fan? And I, I didn't go, hmm, hi hat sounds a little wild. You know, what the fuck? You know, insane. Now, I, I never cared for Chris Slade's drumming in ACDC, I loved him in the firm. Chris Slade is a fantastic drummer. And I have said this for 12 fucking years on this podcast. And this is not a diss on Chris Slade. Absolutely not. There's dudes, you know, when they change drummers, the band completely changes to somebody. You can just feel it. You're just, you're just rocking and you're in your mind. You're like, Mm, something's different here. A lot of people don't know. They're just fired up. They're drinking beers, smoking some fucking reefer. Here comes uh have a drink on me. They're like, yeah, they're not going, ah, Chris Slade, you know, he's, uh, he's pushing it a little too much. You know, he's kind of ahead of the beat. They're not doing that. But Chris Slade was not my uh, favorite 
in the band. And Simon Wright was so long ago that I couldn't even uh, tell you what it was, you know. But um, to put those comments up is funny. But man, people were fucking, people were kind of angry, you know. And and this is these type of people. It was they've been around for a long time. No Cliff, uh, you know, no Cliff Burton, no Metallica, you know, no Bon Scott, no ACDC. These bands are numb to it. They're still doing arenas. They've heard it for years. They don't even, it goes in one ear out there. They don't even fucking hear that. You know what they hear? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's what they hear. That's the sound of fucking ticket sales. That is what they hear. They hear that, and then they hear their guitar. Down. And then they hear massive, massive roars of applause and love. They do not hear any of your bullshit. I'm telling you right now, at fucking 67 years old, they do not hear shit from you. Without Phil, it's not ACDC. I know he'd play great. He was playing at home, and I saw him, and I listened to him. I don't think this was decided by him. I think the band kicked him out. Phil is my friend, and I know him good. I know him good. <laughs> I love that one. Oh, my God. Like I said, I don't think it's the legal stuff either. So um, let's see here. We, it, it, is, it is amazing, these comments. They really blow my mind on here. Of course, you know, you get the bottom of the barrel on Twitter. Absolutely the bottom. Now, a lot of people are thinking uh, a tour is going to be announced. And uh, I don't think so. Let's see here. Um, where is Phil? Everybody. Phil. Phil. Uh, Love that you're including If You Want Blood and mixing up the set list. Hasn't seen the set list at all. This comment. Hasn't seen the set list at all. One song, If You Want Blood. Doesn't even know if it's in the set list. Could just be jamming it. You know? Could just be trying a bunch of different songs. No idea of the set list. I guarantee there's not going to be a bunch of deep tracks in it. There's no way. Uh, let's see. I'm absolutely gutted that Phil is not there. I thought we were going to get a proper chance to see the boys together one last time. I'm gutted. Doesn't even close to expressing my disappointment, actually. <laughs> uh, excellent. Thank you, ACDC. Love you guys. Please record and release the festival. Without Phil, it's not ACDC. This is bullshit. I want my money back. I bought tickets. I'm coming from Oklahoma. Can we please get a farewell tour announcement? No, Phil. No ACDC. <laughs> Fucking. Um, sounds awesome, but no Phil. Sounds dreary, fellas. Would love to hear Brian sing Jailbreak. That is all. It goes on and on and on. And that is, of course, the world of the internet that we live in. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are asking me if I'm going to go to Power Trip. I've been saying I want to go to Power Trip. I'm not quite sure. Uh, these days, I I want to do stand-up comedy before anything. So if I'm booked to do some stand-up comedy, I will skip any concert these days, any of them. There's only a few bands that um, I go to see you know, these days, because I know it's going to be so insane. It would be like uh, Tool, uh, Metallica. Uh, it would be Denko, who aren't playing anymore. It would be uh, the Mars Volta, which I'm going to see. It would be Mastodon. It would be Rival Sons. It would be Marcus King. It would be Sade if she ever played again. It would be uh, Nick Cave, who I'm going to see. Stuff that's really uh, rare to see and kind of uh, outside the box. They're going to do super different set lists. They're going to barely play 
all year other than Metallica who's been touring like crazy, but I love seeing them no matter what, because it's a lot like ACDC. They just come out every year and kill. And it's a great, great thing. So I do not know if I will see ACDC. That's coming from me, a super fan. And, uh, you know, it was supposed to be, what was it? ACDC and Ozzy. Now uh, Ozzy's off, right? And it's ACDC and Judas Priest. Is that right? I, I forget the lineup because it's, uh, what is it? Iron Maiden. Let me look real quick because it's been so long since that uh, announcement. I can't really remember. Power trip, motherfuckers. You know, I, I do want to go all three nights, but, I, you know, I don't want to miss doing comedy. That's just uh, the truth, man. I just I just love doing uh, doing stand-up. Okay, here it is. Where's the fucking lineup? Of course, GNR is on. Um, so, yeah, first day is uh, GNR Iron Maiden. Second day, ACDC Priest, then Metallica and Tool. If I'm going... And I have to pick one day. It's going to be Metallica and Tool. I think that those are two bands that are firing at the top of their fucking game right now. Tool is just unreal. Every time you see them, I just cannot believe how good this band is. It is unreal how original they are, how incredible live sounding uh, they are. And then Metallica, just right now on that tour, just blistering it. So... That is my thoughts on the uh, ACDC stuff. Now, if ACDC reached out to me and said, come out, we got full backstage for you, maybe inter interview the boys or whatever, some kind of thing, I would be there in one fucking minute. But uh, not really sure, because the last time I saw ACDC was the – two weeks before Brian left the band and it was in Vegas at the MGM arena, uh, which by the way, I'm getting ready to do with Bill Burr uh, for the formula one. We're going to be doing comedy in Vegas for the formula one weekend. So if you're out in Vegas, get a ticket to the MGM arena and don't forget I'm doing Madison square garden with Bill. Also, I just want to throw a little plug in there for that. Um, anyway, uh, the last time I saw ACDC was two weeks before Brian was out at the MGM and he sounded fucking great. The band was so good. Me, Greg Riley, and I think uh, my buddy Luke went and we just had the fucking time of our life, man. It was just incredible. So that is my thoughts on ACDC. I do not think they will do a massive tour. I think they might maybe do, let's say, 10 shows total, 50-year anniversary. Be something like Wembley. It'll be something like, um, you know, something huge other than Power Trip, which is huge. Something like, uh, you know, who knows, maybe a, a, a giant Hyde Park concert, a, uh, you know, a, a, a closing goodbye in Australia. I'm not sure, but there's no way they're going to do a, a full tour. I just don't think that uh, unless they're going to replace Cliff and Brian can actually sing uh, a lot of gigs. Uh, I don't think they're, um, they're going to do a giant. I, I know they got to do something for 50 year anniversary. And I said it before, I think it'd be cool if Angus did an Angus Young and Friends tour and just toured America with some insane musicians uh, doing the band, you know, doing Bond era, doing Brian era, full celebration, different guys on drums and guitars and everything, and Angus just tearing it up. Like when you see Angus play Sometimes he sits in once in a while with Guns N' Roses. Super cool. He did that out of Coachella. So uh, that would be cool. If, if Angus wants to just keep playing till he's 100, I'd love to see that. So that's my thoughts. And, uh, you know, DM me or, or 
don't even DM me. Just tweet at me on Twitter or Instagram and tell me what you think. Um, which, by the way, I did mention, um, speaking of uh, uh, staying in shape and rocking, James Hetfield. I want to give him a shout out because I know that uh, people people love to shit on people when they look bad. You know, they go to their Instagram photo and they go, you look like shit, lay off the donuts, Porky. You know, as they're sitting there on their couch with fucking, you know, potato chip dust and, you know, ho-ho stains on their cheeks, just fucking awful looking humans shouting out at um, celebrities. You look like a piece of shit. People are just... I, I've I've come to the conclusion that I need to name my comedy special. People are garbage, but uh, anyway, I want to shout out to Hetfield because this guy is looking amazing. This guy looks fucking fantastic. There's a photo of him on Instagram a couple days ago. It's just him, and he's like, he's like pointing in Arizona, like I'm fucking ready. COVID is out of my blood. Let's do it, and he just looks fucking great perfect i don't need the tank top i don't need a tank top on headfield <laughs> tank top i i am not a tank top guy tank tops are fucking they're gross man i never understood the tank top they're fun in the 70s you put a tank top on your 70s with the fucking some goofy 70s shorts and the white socks all the way up to your knee you know and uh, with your with your Nike blazers, but tank tops are fucking not rock. I will say that. I will say that. But man, does he look good? Uh, let's uh, let's pour one out, man. Uh, let's give a shout out. We lost Jimmy Buffett and Gary Wright last week. I I was never a Jimmy Buffett fan, uh, but I I didn't hate him or anything. I respected what he built. The guy, you know, he had like Pina Colada song and, and sold out, you know, sheds every year. He had like his parrot heads and, uh, you know, a lot like uh, the dead, the same people would go see him all over. He created this full party atmosphere. Like, you know, we're out on a, uh, on a yacht, you know, the, the president of yacht rock, so to speak. I was never a fan of the music, but. Uh, he was, you know, solid human. You could tell having a great time all the time, giving his fans everything. And he lost, you know, he lost his life way too fucking young, way too young. We did lose Gary Wright the same week. And man, do I love this fucking guy. Talk about an underrated guy. Gary Wright, Dream Weaver is played on the radio every day. Every day, Dream Weaver is on the radio. And his other song, Love is Alive, mm, that's on the radio every day. I remember a kid, just being a kid in the backseat of my mom's car, just hearing that intro to Dream Weaver. Just spacey cool. I just closed my eyes again. Hopped aboard the dream weaver. It is, that song is so fucking good. My God, that is a great song. It is not dated. It sounds amazing. It could be a flaming lip song, man. You know, it's, it's just so good. So bummer. We lost a couple greats there. We're losing them. It's getting, um, it's getting, uh, it's getting that time in our lives where the big stars are just, they're getting old, man. And people are getting taken out by shit, man. It just seems like in the age of uh, science, we should be able to get rid of all of these fucking diseases. But no, they're still out there lurking. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, any kind of cancer, ass, throat, uh, fucking brain cancer all of it just it's just rampant out there man and it's fucking awful scary that's another reason i go full minimalist just going to wake up each day and enjoy it um i'll tell you who is still around fucking mick jagger and the stones 
I told you I did uh, have some things to talk about uh, with the Stones. They dropped a new song this week, Angry. And I, and I, you know, I, I enjoy when I, um, I do Instagram live and people want my thoughts on what I think of things. And I have often, uh, most of my life in the last 15 years have said, promote what's great, not what you hate. I firmly believe in that. I think that life, uh, is way too hard and it's way too easy to shit on people way too easy. And, you know, let's just promote what we do like about someone. So people always ask me, what do you think of this? Cause I know they want to try to get some, uh, negative, negative response from me. You know, people love the negativity. The entire internet seems to be fueled by negativity. They love it. They love to trash. They love to hear trash. They love to spread drama and rumors. They love to get your thoughts and then go to the other person. And you, go, you know what Dean Del Rey said about you? He said that your fucking song or your comedy or your movie or your uh, painting sucks. I asked him on his Instagram live and he said, no. There's a lot of stuff I don't like. If somebody asks me, I'm honest. I, I, that's not for me. You know, it's been a uh, common fact uh, recorded millions of times on here that uh, I'm not a fan of fish. And that, that's fine. I like Trey. Trey's a great player. I saw him in fairly well. But people will ask you over and over. You like ween? You like fish? You like clutch? How come you don't like ween? How come you don't like fish? And I, I don't think you really need to don't, you don't need to explain yourself why you don't like something because it, 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 you know, dude, when I was young, my mom put some broccoli up on the plate on the table there. I took a, a bite and I was like, I don't fucking like this. And, uh, you know, she didn't each day try to put broccoli on my plate again. Here's broccoli. I, I, I told you I don't like broccoli. Why don't you like broccoli? I, I don't know. I put it in my mouth. It, it's not for me. It tastes like, tastes like shit to me. I love broccoli. You should like broccoli. No, I, I, I don't like broccoli. <laughs> it's fucking, it's nuts. So the new AC, uh, the new uh, Rolling Stone song came out angry. I think, what do you think? And I didn't care for it. I thought that it was, um, you know, I, I, I respect that they are, going for kind of a modern songwriting vibe. I'm not even quite sure if uh, the Stones wrote it because I haven't seen the um, song credits yet. I don't know if there's an outside writer or if, uh, you know, I do know that Jagger likes to stay current. I'm surprised that Jagger never put a, a kind of a hip hop song on a Stones record because he does like to uh, gather flavors and uh, incorporate it into the Stones, starting all the way back to the beginning of the Stones with blues. And that is the uh, you know ground floor of the Rolling Stones. So I am super fucking amazed and in awe of the Stones. At 80 years old, they've got a new record coming out, uh, Jagger being 80, uh, Keith coming up on 80. Uh, we got two original members left. Ron Woods there, he's, uh, he came in later on, but I am in awe of the amount of amazing music they put out over all these years. I am in awe that uh, they still sell out stadiums. I am in awe of how great they look and sound and how in shape they are and how happy they fucking look whenever I see them. And I am in awe of all the, the people that they make happy, okay? I fucking love it. The new song, I did not like. It doesn't mean shit, you know? They could have, a, the record's coming out, there could be two, three songs on there that blow my fucking mind. And I am the one who has been promoting and shouting out 
uh, 80s and 90s stones for about five years. I think people look over a big part of their catalog that I think is amazing. And it's hard to even look at that music as amazing to a lot of people because we're looking at stuff like Sticky Fingers, Some Girls, um, uh, uh, Exile on Main Street, uh, Tattoo You, Black and Blue, It's Only Rock and Roll. These records are fucking nuts. I get it. But the 80s and 90s Stones, I think, are some incredible, incredible records that not a lot of people talk about. And so I thought I'd put together a list because I think, personally, I think the Stones could do one night with just the 80s and 90s Stones songs and blow your fucking mind. Any of these songs I'm going to read, if the Foo Fighters, if it was a Foo Fighters song or if it was a, uh, let's say, you know, any new band right now, a Marcus King song or, or you know, a Neil Francis song, I think people would be losing their minds like, holy shit, have you heard this fucking song by Neil Francis? You know, Undercover of the Night? Anyway, so I put together a list for you guys and uh, of, of make a song, a playlist for yourself of stones and i didn't include tattoo you because the whole thing is a masterpiece and a lot of people look at the stones as tattoo you the last great stones record that is what a lot of people say and um so i didn't include that it's one of my top three top four stones records ever it was also one of the best tours i've ever seen so i started off with um 1983. So Tattoo You is 81. After that, they uh, uh 83, they're barely fucking together. They put together uh, a record called Undercover. And uh, on this record, there are four songs that are fucking fantastic. Undercover of the Night, She Was Hot, Tie You Up, and Too Much Blood. A lot of people have never even heard she was hot, tie you up, and too much blood. I guarantee probably 90% of the people out there on this listening to this never heard of that. Undercover of the Night was the uh, the single, and it is fantastic. 86, they did a record called Dirty Work. They got the funny-ass cover. They're all wearing like uh, kind of Miami, Miami-colored pastel, kind of bright-colored pinks and yellows. They're on a couch. Came out in 86. Uh, it had, uh, one hit to the body. Great song, not a great record, but they had a cover Harlem shuffle that kind of got them through with the uh, radio play, but one hit to the body. Fantastic. Now in 89, they put out what I consider one of the greatest stones records since tattoo you, if they would have went tattoo you and then Steel Wheels, it would have been head explosion. And I've said this for years. I cannot tell you how great Steel Wheels is. The tour was bizarre. The tour was, uh, they played all the songs like 100 miles an hour. It was like, a, it felt like a fucking cocaine fueled, just like, you can listen to the steel wheels tour there's a live record from it everything is just cooking the band had cool short haircuts jagger looked fucking you know he had to, he just looked like a kind of a like an 80s like eight you know late 80s fucking i don't even know their their haircuts were slick and it's the last bill wyman record and man is this fucking record good Almost the entire record is flawless. Steel Wheels, 89. It was uh, sad, sad, sad. Unbelievable. Uh, Almost Hear You Sigh, one of my favorite Stone songs ever. Mixed Emotions, Terrifying. Hearts for Sale, I love that. My heart's for sale. Continental Drift, Slipping Away. Unbelievable, man. 
Unbelievable. Oh, hold on. Let me look here. I think there's... Uh... I mean, this whole fucking thing. Let me look at it one more time. My fucking phone is, uh, I hate my phone when I need to, when I need to look at it real quick. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Here it is. Steel Wheels, 89. Sad, sad, sad. Great. Misks, missed emotions, like I said. Terrifying. Uh, hearts for sale. Blinded by love. That's a great one, too. Almost here you sigh. Continental drift, unbelievable. Slipping away. All right. Great fucking record. After that, and now these are just this is just 80s and 90s stones. Put all these together on a playlist and and completely. I mean, this is crazy. This is why I'm fired up for the new stones record. The new song doesn't mean much to me if I don't like it, because I'm going to probably have 10 or 12 songs from them that I'm going to like at least two or three. There's not been a Stones record that came out uh, in the last 30 years that there wasn't at least two songs that I loved. Voodoo Lounge, 94. Man, and by the way, they're just putting records out every couple years in the 80s and 90s. Bam, bam, bam. Go out, do full stadium tours, you know, just crazy working, just working. Voodoo Lounge 94, Love is Strong. Great, great video. They were doing good videos back then, too. Uh, the Worst Killer, baby, you're the worst. Keith killing it. Out of Tears is one of the best Stone songs in the last 25 years. Easily out of tears. And you got me rocking. Just put on Out of Tears. It kills Angry. And probably nobody even fucking listens to it. Out of Tears, it will, it'll laugh at the new single Angry. It has got so much fucking emotion. It is unbelievable. Then 97, uh, this would be the last 90s record here. Bridges to Babylon. Anybody seen my baby? Good song, man. And uh, Saint of Me. Uh, that was a, a song on there that almost could be a Nick Cave song. Uh, you're not going to make a saint of me. It's fucking great. So that is my love of 80s, late 80s, into the 90s, Rolling Stones. And I really think that people, and this is why they are top, five band of all time. I really think people forget and underestimate how many great fucking songs they've had after Tattoo You. It is unreal, man. And people just take it for granted because they are just that good. And also, I do blame the Stones. I have been... um uh, critical of bands that play the same fucking set list minus two songs every tour for 20, 30 years. I blame bands for not dabbling into some of their great, great pass. Um, you know, ACDC is uh, is uh, uh, guilty of that. I know a lot of bands want to hear, hear the 15 tunes. Uh, Metallica is doing something genius right now where they're just doing two set lists, all the different records, a lot of different stuff. You know, Metallica playing fucking Dirty Window off uh, St. Anger. They know people hate it. They say it. Here's one off your favorite record, St. Anger. Ha, ha, ha. And then they play Dirty Window, and it fucking blows your mind. Anyway, do yourself a favor. Uh, go back. I should have said right before I announced all the songs to get a pen out. Uh, that way you don't DM me and go, what was the one song you were talking about? Because, you know, oh, oh ah, uh, people. Uh. But uh, do yourself a favor. Write down those tunes. Make yourself a playlist. Let me know what you think. All right. Um, once again, tour dates, ddelray.com. I'm going to be in Utah at Boxcar Comedy coming up in two weeks. Headline of four shows. I'm going to be at the Funny Pages in uh colorado springs four shows uh i think it's four shows maybe two shows i can't remember uh deandelray.com 
and there is merchandise on my website. Uh, so yes, visit the website. And also I want to give a shout out to the new Patreoners. Uh, if you are not a Patreon, join. There's uh, over 140 or so bonus episodes. And I also do some Zooming. New Patreoners right now are Jeff Howe, John Thompson, and Tony Ski. Thank you so much for joining up. And I also want to give a shout out to all of the Patreoners that have been there new or uh, a long time. It just... It's just amazing to me, and I cannot thank you enough. And and the people that uh, have been there and then had to leave, I get it. It's, uh, it's a difficult time, and I just thank you all for supporting this. I'm doing the Grail now again, which, by the way, if you didn't hear the new Grail, uh, the guest is Tay Herrera, Master Motorcycle Engraver. That came out on Friday. It's on YouTube and iTunes. Subscribe, leave a review, tell friends. He uh, did a lot of uh, the greatest engravings on all the West Coast Chopper projects. So, great guess. Okay. A um, couple more things to talk about, and then we'll get out of here. I want to, uh, uh, I hope that Bruce Springsteen feels better. He, uh, speaking of set list, he rolled into Jersey before he had to cancel a bunch of shows. He's got some uh, stomach issues, some ulcers which is fucking rough. And uh, I want to wish that guy uh, all the best. Uh, Springsteen went into Jersey, sold out three nights stadium. And uh, he'd been critiqued all this tour for not changing set lists and stuff. And he rolled in there and played one night, eight songs off Born to Run. Now that's what I'm fucking talking about. I want to see some kind of surprise like that. Went in there, just played deep cuts, man. He was rocking that stadium. Eight songs off of Born to Run. I would lose my mind, you know? Born to Run, straight up masterpiece. Meeting across the river. I think that was the only one he didn't play. Or maybe he did. I can't remember. Jungle, in, oh man. Just destroying three nights in his hometown of New Jersey. So get well, my man. And uh, I'm hoping to see him December 4th or the 6th in L.A. That is somebody I will definitely go see. Uh, you know, and I hope that he uh, turns it up for L.A. A lot of bands, when they come into town, L.A., uh, I know Dead & Co. does it. They come into L.A., boy, they just fucking, they play crazy set lists. They go for it. It's wild. So, um. And uh, I guess that's really kind of about, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. We can't miss this. Big thing happened over the weekend. New York City honored the Beastie Boys with their own Beastie Boys Square, which is on the corner of Ludlow and Rivington in the Lower East Side, the exact corner where the Paul's Boutique uh, album cover was taken gave these guys uh it was beautiful man they just they did the countdown they slid off this cover and there it was beastie boys square and uh ad rock said the funniest thing he goes you know i walk around new york and i see street names and i never think about you know how they were named or what what they were named after and he goes i could just see like 30 years from now some kids walking around like, what the fuck's a Beastie Boy Square? <laughs> it was funny. That guy's always been funny as shit, Ad Rock. Uh, of course, Mike Diamond, Mike D, Ad Rock were there. Long live MCA. Beautiful. Those guys are 100% New York City, and they are damn legends. And, and this on the 50-year anniversary of hip hop, it couldn't be cooler. And then from what I read, there were people that were really fucking grinding to get this done. And it's just fantastic to see all the people that showed up on the hot, humid day celebrating one of the greatest hip hop groups of all fucking time. You know, I gave Paul's Boutique number two out of the top 10 for me. And I did say that between Public Enemy, Fear of the Black Planet 
and Paul's Boutique, they do rotate up and down one and two, and they really could be both number one to me. Paul's Boutique has fueled me for years, uh, putting it on, getting ready for shows, putting it on, driving down the road. The Beastie Boys to me, no one sounds like them. No one's done what they did, going from a punk rock group, playing instruments with a with a with a woman on. I think she played what she played guitar, drums, you know, punk rock group, CBGBs, that whole thing, turning in to hip hop, dropping one of the biggest records debuts ever licensed to ill completely turning hip-hop upside down touring with madonna on that tour the biggest tour of the time then dropping paul's boutique being considered a full failure by the dumb uh record industry it failed it's a flop and secretly or not secretly but slowly becoming this giant underground juggernaut of a record delivering some of the best videos of all time you know then putting out after that just the masterpiece check your head dominating mtv what you want past the mic jimmy james then going ill communication sure shot root down sabotage then putting out one of the coolest records ever. They, they're they full hip hop. Then they put on the instruments to sabotage. Then they drop like a jazz kind of lounge record. The in sound from the way out, which is one of my favorites, man. You just put that on. It's just, it's just fucking great, great party music, you know? And then, uh, you know, Hello Nasty, which was one of the best tours I've ever seen at the Oakland Arena. Full fucking spaceship in the middle, popping out. Just great, man. The green sweatsuits, that tour. I was at Red Rocks, Burr and I were walking down the hall, getting ready to go on. There it is, just the beasties at Red Rocks in the green sweatsuits on the uh, Intergalactic Tour. Intergalactic, can I be that down? Oh! unbelievable so i cannot uh be happier and i can't wait i'm going to the garden like i said to do uh i'm going to new york to do madison square garden and i'm going to go down there and take a picture and, and just take in that energy you know that day it's down there by uh standard and strange uh like one of my favorite clothing stores ever some of my favorite restaurants are down there uh, I'm going down to the Lower East Side and I'm going to salute Beastie Boys Square. I'm going to take in that fucking energy and just, uh, if I can just capture a little of it, the day that whoever shot that Paul's Boutique album cover, you know, take in some Glenny e. Friedman love, some Beasties. Oh, man. Uh, so hats off to those guys. Long live MCA and the Beastie Boys will always be deep in my heart. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope to see you at some of the live shows. DeanDelRay.com, all the tour dates. And once again, thank you for joining the Patreon. I, I really appreciate it. Keep the candles lit, my friends. And... Uh, Stay positive and uh, thank you.